Hi there and welcome to the channel of a disappointed man with me Jason Kennedy the disappointed man now the eagle-eyed among you may have already noticed something slightly different about me from my previous video that's right I'm wearing a watch no of course not I've had all of my hair cut off because with summer coming to Taiwan it's simply not advisable to be wandering around the streets of Taipei City looking like the crazy character from David Lynch's Eraser ahead. Okay, that said, today will be part seven of my grand bookshelf tour. And what this will do is complete the chronological section of my library. And it's all 20th century stuff that runs all the way to the mid 1980s, I believe. So without further ado, let's begin. So first we have Thomas Bernhard, my favourite writer and the subject of the most popular video on this channel. 1100 views and counting. Wow, I never thought it would do so well. Just a word or two about these as we go through them. There are nine. Wittgenstein's nephew, great place to start. Nice and short, very entertaining. Another good place to start, Concrete. I really love this one. Excellent. If you haven't read any Bernhard, this is a good one to get. Then Deeper. Darker, the line works. It's quite a read and it is wonderful. One of his early novels, Frost, not quite as enjoyable. In truth, for the completest. Gargoyles contains an amazing monologue by a crazy prince, which is superb and extends for about a hundred pages or so. This is excellent. Possibly my favourite, Woodcutters, so, so painfully funny, truly wonderful read, sometimes called Cutting Timber. I've got the one called Woodcutters. Then Autobiography, although there's a rather thin line between Bernhard's fiction and his autobiography, but it is Gathering Evidence, which collects together five volumes or so of his personal writings. I wrote my thesis about one volume of this, Breath. A decision it's magnificent i've got two copies actually here's another one um they're both identical actually once you read them i thought maybe the print would be bigger if i bought it again but no and it is absolutely tiny you must have reading glasses or perfect eyesight to get into that okay that is all the thomas bernhard now more on to some bits and pieces we've got herman hesse demian I did mention this when I reviewed Fifth Business by Robertson Davies. I really enjoy reading this. I periodically pick it up maybe every 10 years or so and just pass an afternoon with that. Then Thomas Mann, The Holy Sinner. It's all marked up because I reviewed it on the channel, review number 13. This was brilliant. You can see that there is a loose theme developing. Next is another Austrian writer, isn't it? Or Czech, is it? Franz Kafka. Metamorphosis and other stories. Superb. Has an introduction. No, sorry, a forward by Anne Rice. I can't work that out. Quite why. No vampires in Kafka. Then, Alberto Moravia, review number seven, I think it is. The Time of Indifference. That was absolutely superb. I'm just getting into this one, The Conformist, but it looks very promising. Okay, let me dig out some more. We remain in the same geographical area and we'll be moving over at the end of these into Russia. OK, so first up, Hermann Hesse, Journey to the East. Very short, but packed with incident and wisdom, of course, always from this writer. I really enjoyed this. Then another short novel novella, The Afternoon of a Writer by Peter Hanke. Now, I have thousands of books on these shelves and I would nominate this as the worst of them. It was absolute garbage no surprise then that he won a nobel prize for literature oh my goodness next institute benjamenta or benjamenta by robert walser brilliant stuff all of his writings are worth reading he is truly an artist like no other the university library has a great selection of them and some of the short stories are so funny there is one that is a job application and it concludes by noting that he is drowning in obedience. I should add that to my resume. Excellent writer. Oh, Kafka again. The Trial, 
possibly my favourite Kafka novel. Not that he wrote that many. I do like The Castle too, but this was really good. Then, one of the greatest novels of the last century or so. I think it was published just before the turn of the 20th century. Nat Hampson, Hunger. One thing I like about Nat Hampson is his pathological loathing of the English. It does amuse me when you read his complaints about English people. And then he went to America and got a job, what? As a conductor on a streetcar? Yeah, strange person, but brilliant writer. This is superb. Next, oh, you might not have heard of this. I had never heard of this guy when I picked this up. It's Alfred Andersh, Ephraim's book. And I haven't finished it, but it's really intriguing and it is really well written. It's about a German journalist returning to Berlin after World War II and kind of revisiting the family home, which was handed over to good Germans. He himself being Jewish has been expropriated and it's really gritty and has a wonderful evocative atmosphere. Okay, now we're into Russia, yes. Dostoevsky, The Idiot. I first read this when I was about 20. I was completely unprepared for its force. I should really read it again. All I remember is there is a great chapter that closes with the hero, the prince, having an epileptic fit at the same time as a thunderstorm breaks. That chapter is superb. And it also has the phenomenon in this novel of the feeling of eyes in the back of your head, you know, boring into you. And you look around and there is the adversary, the villain, gazing at you with intense malice. Yes, I remember that part too. Then a hero of our time, people into Russian literature are usually into this book by Mikhail Lermontov. Yeah, I dimly remember reading it in my 20s as well and being charmed by it. Then an emigre, Russian, Nabokov, not Nabokov, he said it's Nabokov, he even put it in an essay he wrote. This is a selection. There's one particularly great short story in here um, that, where is it? Um, signs and symbols, yes. Anyone who wants to study literature, that is a great place to begin. Yeah, it's of particular interest to literary scholars. That one. Excellent short stories. And the last one. Oh, one of the most depressing reads of my life. It is The Cancer Ward by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Superb writing, just unfathomably heavy, heavy, heavy writing, but brilliant too. Now, he did deserve all those literary prizes he got, not like Peter Hank. Oh dear. Let's find some more books to talk about. Leaving Russia behind, we have some works by Samuel Beckett next. First up, some plays, Waiting for Godot. Rather amazing to find a copy without lots of students' notes in the margins, but this one's completely clean. Then, Endgame and Act Without Words 1. These are not actually my favourite plays by Beckett. I really like Crap's Last Tape and Not I and Play. There's a great BBC production of that. I'll put a link in the description below. Features the late Alan Rickman. Then we have some of Beckett's novels. Murphy, kind of ambivalent about this one. Another one I'm not so sold on is Dream of Fair to Middling Women. But the last one is particularly good. What? This is superb. There are some great set pieces in here. There's a meeting where everyone has to shake hands with everyone else and Beckett describes every single one of these handshakes. Goes on for pages. I found that very amusing. And then there's another sequence where um, they have to provide a famished dog on demand for the master of the house. And doing this is extremely difficult and it goes into all the hypothetical logistics of having this famished dog ready. So amusing. Samuel Beckett, what? Then it's Orwell, Animal Farm there. And mm, some redundancy actually, because next up is Orwell, the complete novel. So I guess there's an Animal Farm in there too. And there he is smoking a cigarette. I'm not a fan of all of the novels, but 1984 is, of all the works of literature I've read, the one that made the deepest impression, at least on my vocabulary. Always using concepts from that. And then this one is also great, isn't it? The Road to Wigan Pier. All right, 
just let me get some more books and we'll carry right on. I've never actually met anyone into the next writer that I'm going to show you. Maybe some viewers of the channel know more about her. It's Sybil Bedford. Here is her jigsaw. She wrote a biography of Aldous Huxley and she moved in his circle during the 60s over there in California. I believe highly educated, highly intellectual. Here's another one by her, A Legacy. It is really brilliantly written. That has to be said of the sections that I've read. This is the one I've got furthest through. It's her memoir, Quicksands. Have a really beautiful hardback of that. If you know anything about Sybil Bedford, please share it with me. Next up, a more famous female writer. It is Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar. I've already moaned about this a few times, but I had an amazing Faber and Faber paperback of this. This one's not so satisfying, but a great read nevertheless. And then for the true devotee of Sylvia Plath, her journals, which are quite thick. I haven't got that far into them actually. And there is just some really mundane moaning about getting children places at the right school and that stuff. So I have to dig deeper there. Oh, next. Umberto Eco misreading some of his newspaper columns that he did. Most of his stuff is worth reading, actually. Such a playful intellect, a great writer, a great theorist as well. Oh, this is better, though, by Umberto Eco. His faith in fakes. Yes, these essays are superior to the misreadings. Mm. Much missed. Then, an oddity. Dennis Potter's Ticket to Ride, one of the weirdest novels you'll ever read. The ending, or double ending, just left me utterly confused. It's quite sleazy, its representation of London, which I did enjoy, actually. And there are some weird dream sequences, or are they dreams? Are they happening? Who can tell? Strange. Oh, Kaposhinsky. Um, it's his Another Day of Life when he went to Angola to watch what would happen when the liberation movement took power and the Portuguese retreated. Very dangerous assignment that he took upon himself there. Then, No No Boy, I did show this in a book haul. It was written by John Okada and it's about experiences in the internment camps for the Japanese during World War II. Not a very well-known book actually quite excited to read that then Kobo Abe this was one of my reviews one of the best novels I read last year absolutely superb wonderful read highly recommended and another Japanese one Shusaku Endo the Samurai not got into this one yet but looks promising Camus the Stranger this really is odds and ends isn't it of 20th century literature great read. I think I read it first when I was about 18, which is the perfect age. Oh, this one, the bane of many a school child in England. It's William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Oh dear, writing essays about this. I remember it so well, aged 13 and three quarters. And then some Graham Greene, The Quiet American, movie tie-in here. Very cinematic writer, actually. I think he did do some work for the films too. Michael Caine there adorning the cover. The Third Man and the Fallen Idol. The Fallen Idol was excellent. That's also um, a movie, but I think the movie has a different title. The Ministry of Fear. I haven't read this one yet, but it has a great cover at least. And one more. I haven't got, I haven't got my favourite Graham Greene novel here, which is The Power and the Glory set in Mexico. But this one is the heart of the matter. All right. And then more war stuff. To finish, it is Olivia Manning with her Fortunes of War. Um, is it a trilogy? Or is it just two books? I'm not sure about the way they've arranged them. Um, because this one is super long. And then the other one is not so long. They begin in Prague. I remember that much. And they are really well written again, as you can see. I tend to try and just collect quality writing. So I might say that of all of these books. So all of these are well written. But... It just is very strong on the characterization and the atmosphere it presents. I really want to get more into that. Who is it on the cover? Oh, yes, it's Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson appeared in an adaptation of that. That may be worth checking out. There, I 
think I've done enough book tour for today. I was going to go on to Hemingway next, but I suppose we'll have to leave Papa for next time. So I will just say my farewells and depart. Be safe, be strong, and I shall see you anon. Nanu, nanu.